15 says, when a boat acquires the right of way, she shall initially give the other boat room to keep clear. Um, so what that means is, when you gain right away, you have to give the other boat room to avoid you, no matter what you do. Um, the big point of this is, right here, neither boat has right away, right? They're not overlapped. So all that blue can't do is run into the back of yellow. Now, as soon as they become overlapped, windward boat and leeward boat come into play. Um, the leeward boat can head the uh, windward boat up. Do you guys remember that rule? That was on same tack, overlapped, hold on. Um, so what this says is you can't just <coughs> slam up into yellow and say, I'm the leeward boat, I've right away. You've got to give them time. What sort of time is um, well, that's once again, it varies by wind condition. It varies by how fast you guys are going. It doesn't vary, however, if the other boat's looking or not. That doesn't matter. Um, you also don't have to say lured. You don't have to talk to them. They have to see what you're doing. And if they don't see it, then hopefully an umpire's there and they'll go on your side every time. Boat acquires right of way. She must initially give the other boat room to keep clear unless she acquires right of way because of the other boat's actions. The boat clear stern must keep clear. The windward boat must keep clear. The boat acquiring right of way to keep clear. She must give... All right, rule 16. And we only have one more after this, so bear with me, guys. Um, we already kind of talked about 16, actually. 16 is specifically saying that you have to give the other boat time. Um, uh, you'll always hear how much time is enough time. Answer is it varies. But just think if you were the other boat and you saw it was happening, would you be able to get out of the way? That's what I do. So Generally, the time is going to vary with the wind speed, right? So if yep. there's more breeze, theoretically, you can react faster. That's so your, your window will probably go down. Yeah. Question? No, I was going to wait so you can see. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, proper course is the next part. This is his line. All right. Now, overlap is really important. So, overlap will come into play in most rules, actually. Uh, so, once again, the magical line that extends from the back of your boat, if it's overlapped with the bow of the other boat, you are overlapped. All right. Rule 17 is very long. So. If you reference your sheet, it says, A boat overtaking within two lengths to lure shall not sail above her proper course. So we'll look at the animation of that. Right away boat, changing course. Normally a boat can sail any course she chooses as long as she keeps clear of the other boats or gives them room when she must do so. Occasionally, the course she is allowed to sail after her starting signal is restricted by her proper course, which is a course she would sail to finish as soon as possible in the absence of the other boat. Okay, so proper course. This is a really <laughs> important thing to write down. Proper course is the course you would sail to not interfere with any other boats and get to the next mark as fast as possible. So, the course you would sail in the absence of other boats to get to the next mark. What this says is, when you have two overlap boats, the lured overlap boat cannot sail above the proper course. To mess with the other boat for that good. Unless, and we'll get into team racing when that changes. Another technical. If she obtains a leeward overlap from clear astern, and within two lengths of another boat, she must not sail to windward of her proper course while the overlap exists. The boat clear astern must keep clear, the windward boat must now keep clear. The leeward boat must not sail above her proper course. At a mark when her prop. Okay. Down just 217. How are you guys feeling? Really brief just like what the zone is. Okay, sure. Don't yeah. go into all the technical Wait, was this 17? That, that was 17. 17 is proper course. Okay, okay. that is so basically crafting Which is all basic. And anyone, if you have any other rules questions, I can go into a million if you want to stay after. Yeah.
So rule 18 has to deal with mud groundings. And it has like four parts because it gets really confusing really fast. Um, first thing you need to know is there is this imaginary circle. That's not really a name. And a ellipse. Uh, and I'll just get into the first part. It says that if two boats enter the three boat length circle overlapped. You explain the three boat length circle. Oh, right, okay. The three boat length circle is a space it would take to fit three boats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And as you can see, this is even harder to see, like visualize when you're on the water. So when you get into situations with other boats, like it always comes into play whether when you enter the zone, um, and it's really complicated to under, to like to see when when you actually do. So a lot of the skippers will be talking to each other when the boats go in, and basically they the way you settle it is by mutual agreement. There's no there's no way to really know when you're in there. And as a crew, it's really important to go to help your skipper with that. If they're looking at overlap, then you call when you think they're in, or vice versa. So it's that's an important part where you're working as a team to try and get the right information to the skipper. And that <coughs> brings me to my next point. It is way more important for crews to know the rules than skippers. Skippers can get by, but crews, it's amazing when I can say to my crew, who has rights? And they just say, you do. Perfect. I can focus on driving. The best boats will have the crews be the boats experts. Um, now, what I'm going to tell you of rule 18 is if you enter three boat length circle overlapped, the inside boat gets room to run the mark. That means if they're entitled to room, this boat can't just head them straight over here and not let them run the mark. So, if you're overlapped entering the three-boat length circle, the inside boat gets room. Inside the eggs. Inside to More the in the circle or? Oh, good question. Inside to uh, center line, like to the one. Okay. So in between this would be more outside, and this would be more inside. And that, that even that applies if you're the trailing yeah. boat, but you're still closer to the mark. The, the lead so boat way around 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 and close yeah, the door sorry. on you. We're rounding the mark this way. And the wind is coming from here because this is a downwind rounding. Explain how the right boat is inside that one. Yeah. Okay. So, if we look again at who's overlapped right now, we have to uh, draw the imaginary lines. So. So that's just like a massive overlap. You're definitely overlapped. Um, so these two boats are overlapped. When they enter the three boat length circle, so the inside boat gets room to round the mark. How is this one? We draw the sails. Sure. So what's important here is that you make note of the position of all the boats around you when you, at the time that you think you're entering the zone, and that you see that other people are agreeing that they're entering the zone. Because once you're already entered, it doesn't matter if you establish overlap after that point. It's at the moment that you go into the zone that it matters and that your rules while you're rounding the mark are based off of. So if you go into the zone and you are not overlapped with anybody when you cross that dotted line around the mark, then and somebody comes between you and the mark inside that circle, they do not have rights on you. And so that's when you hear people calling no room in races, because that person did not have the right to come in there um, since they were not overlapped at the point when everybody entered that circle. It's also important if you're the boat. Um, inside, inside is right here. See how they're they're going downwind and they're trying to turn up that way. Oh, okay. If you draw the paths, you'll be able to see it. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, that's oh. So if they were like, yeah, yeah, just draw the pattern. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, no, no. Basically, if you have a boat inside you, like, you close to the mark, they you have to move to let, let them around the mark, then 
Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Perfect. And as Will's drawing, you can see how you start to get a pinwheel at the mark. See? So it's important that yeah, if you're like the fourth boat out on the stack there, you that you know who um, you have. Like the inside boat there has rights to round the mark on all three of the boats to windward of them. So you've got to be mindful of that. You know, if somebody below you is trying to head you up, you need to be careful of where you are. So, things you should take away mainly are port starboard, proper course, and overlap. The next rules we go into, uh, well, we can do some other time later in the season, but make sure you look over your rules. And from now on, I would, if you have your new notebook now, I would cut this up and glue it into your notebook or paste it or tape it, whatever. And then this one I would also put in because this gives a more general overlook of what we just went over. So, yeah, I think that's it. If you, Yay! You have some fun. Can you send me that link and I'll put it so in the Well, obviously, did a really good job planning this. So, just for people in the future, when you're leading Talk Sue, just like try to be.